Hi, how are you? I am Brando and uh, in this occasion I will talk to you about what you can do or what you have to do when you find when you have when you're when you have a uh, preposition and then you have to use a verb. Uh, this is something some something very particular has to happen when you find this uh, when when you are in this situation. Okay, if a preposition uh, is followed by a verb, the verb has to end in ing form. Let me give you here some examples. Uh, are you interested in working for us? In is a preposition, so after using in, you have to use uh, you have to put the verb in the in ing form. I'm not good at learning languages. What are the advantages of having a car? Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to your party. How about meeting for lunch tomorrow? Why don't you go out instead of sitting at home all the time? And Amy went to work in spite of feeling ill. Uh, all the time, whenever you when, when you have a uh, preposition, then then you have to use a verb. The verb has to be in ing form. Okay, that is going to be uh, it's it's going to be like that all the time. Okay, all the all the time. Also, uh, when you have the word before and after, uh, when you put them at either if it is at the beginning of the sentence or if it's at the in the middle of the sentence after before and after you have to use the verb in ing form uh, like for example uh, before going out i phoned sarah uh, what did you do after finishing school uh, you can also say before i went out or after you finished but never before to finish or before after to finish before finishing or before before finishing or before finished before before you finished then you can use the preposition by plus ing form in order to say how something happens or how you did something the burglars got into the house by breaking a window and climbing in you can improve your english by reading more she made herself ill by not eating properly Many accidents happen. Uh, many accidents are caused by people driving too fast. Okay, the same thing happens with the word without. Uh, we ran 10 kilometers without stopping, and it was a stupid. Thing, uh, it was a stupid thing to say. Uh, I said it without thinking. And one more. I have here the preposition to. You know that the word to t o can be a preposition. So every time, any time you have a, you're going to use a verb after it. If it's a preposition, uh, <clears throat> it has to be in ing form because after prepositions, you have to use a noun. And if it's a verb, the way to to transform a verb to a noun is by using by uh, by adding ing at the end. Once you add ing at the end, it can be a uh, seen as a uh, a noun so for example if you say we decided to travel uh this is like this is the infinitive as a this as a verb you say we decided to travel by by train would you like to meet for uh, for lunch tomorrow okay in this case to is part of the verb the verb to do verb to meet after the verb to meet, we have the, the preposition for. So after for, we have lunch. Would you like to meet for lunch? And then we have, we decided to travel by train. By is a preposition and after it, you have a noun. So let me give you some examples. Uh, we went from Paris to Geneva. From Paris to Geneva. After to, you have the word Geneva, which is a, uh, a noun. And then I prefer tea to coffee. And are you looking forward to the weekend? Okay. If you want to use the, the, the expression looking forward to. And then you want to use a noun because you're really looking forward to an action. You say, I am looking forward to seeing you. I am looking forward to eating with you. I am looking forward to playing soccer. Okay. This is the way in which you have to do it. Uh, this is uh, what you have to do when you encounter a preposition and then you have to use a, uh, a verb. Thank you very much for paying attention and see you next time. Hola.
Soy Brando y en esta ocasión les voy a hablar sobre lo que tienes que hacer cuando encuentras una proposición y luego un verbo. Siempre que tengas una proposición y luego tengas que utilizar un verbo, el verbo tiene que estar en su forma ING, ya que luego de las proposiciones siempre tiene que haber un sustantivo y la forma de convertir el verbo en un sustantivo es que se hace al colocarle ING al final. ¿Ok? Les voy a dar algunos ejemplos. Uh, are you interested in working for us? ¿Estás interesado en trabajar con, por nos, para nosotros? I'm not good at learning languages. No soy bueno aprendiendo idiomas. Uh, what are the advantages of having a car? ¿Cuáles son las ventajas de tener un carro? Thanks very much for inviting me to your party. Gracias por invitarme a su fiesta. How about meeting for lunch tomorrow? ¿Qué tal si nos encontramos mañana para el almuerzo? Why don't you go out instead of sitting at home all the time? ¿Por qué no sales en vez de sentarte en la casa, en tu casa todo el día? Todo el tiempo. Amy went out to work in spite of uh, feeling ill. Amy se fue al trabajo aunque se sintiera enfermo. También eh, puedes notar el, el uso de las uh, de ING luego de las palabras before y after. Siempre que encontremos estas palabras y vayamos a utilizar un verbo, se tiene que utilizar con la forma ING. Como por ejemplo, Before going out, I found Sarah. Antes de salir, llamé a Sara. What did you do after finishing school? ¿Qué hiciste luego de terminar el colegio? Y también tenemos la proposición by, que se utiliza, que luego de esto se tiene que utilizar la forma ING y se utiliza para explicar cómo se hace algo. Como por ejemplo, Uh, you can improve your English by reading more. Puedes mejorar tu inglés leyendo más. She made herself ill by not eating properly. Ella se enfermó al no comer propiamente. Many accidents are caused by people driving too, by people driving too fast. Muchos accidentes ocurren por gente que maneja muy rápido. Al igual que la palabra without con ing. We ran 10 kilometers without stopping. Manejamos 10 kilómetros sin parar. It was, a stup it was a stupid thing to say. I said it without thinking. Fue algo muy estúpido que decir. Lo dije sin pensar. Siempre que tengamos la palabra without, se tiene que agregar ing al final, el verbo. Y finalmente, tenemos la palabra to, de o, que este puede ser el papel de verbo. O también puede ser una proposición. En el caso de que sea una proposición, se tiene que agregar el verbo en ING, ya que como les comenté antes, luego de una proposición siempre va un sustantivo. Entonces se tiene que decir, uh, we went from Paris to Geneva. Fuimos de, de París a Geneva. Uh, I prefer tea to coffee. Prefiero café, que prefiero té, que café. Are you looking forward to the weekend? Estás emocionado por el fin de semana. Y bueno, como por ejemplo tenemos esta expresión looking forward to. En este caso looking forward to, la palabra to quiere, quiere decir que es, una, es usado como proposición. Looking forward to es una expresión que se utiliza para decir que tengo muchas ganas de hacer algo. Tengo, o que tengo muchas ganas, o que me dan ganas de hacer algo. Okay, algo que va a suceder en el futuro, un futuro no muy lejano. Y que tengo ganas de hacerlo, quiero que, se, que, que, quiero que quiera hacerlo ya. Entonces, se, si, lo que yo quiera, si lo que va a pasar luego es una acción, entonces yo tengo que decir, I am really looking forward to going out with you. Tengo muchas ganas de salir contigo. I am looking forward to hearing from you. Tengo muchas ganas de, o oh, espero escuchar de ti pronto. Esto, esto fue lo que se hace cuando se encuentra una proposición y luego se utiliza un verbo. Muchas gracias, eh, espero les haya gustado, nos vemos en la próxima.